my name is Sam, and I'm the president of Noble Fees Corporation. I, uh, the company I put together is in regards to trying to um, figure out an alternative energy source um, using pure water itself with concentrations of heavy water and maybe some other elements in it. Um, and I would like to say that I believe that this technology is in the realm of nuclear fusion. Um, I, like, I call this technology electromagnetic fusion. I believe it's the perfect marriage between hot fusion and cold fusion. In regards to hot fusion, I believe that I am grabbing the science of that sort of field in regards to the electric field. That an extremely strong electric field is needed in this mode of application to create not only a poloidal current, but an extremely large voltage to induce relativistic charged particles to make a magnetic pinching device. In regards to cold fusion, the simplicity of using water itself in the liquid state, I think it's just uh, it's a no-brainer. So, and, but, uh, and of course, many people have been trying to do different areas of research in such a, such a regard, and I believe that I have found the proper road. I'm about to show you an experiment. I'm not getting you know, an extremely excess amount of energy out of it, but this is the road. I believe fundamentally that what I'm about to show you is where research needs to go into and expand it upon. This is fundamentally what I'm trying to say. Now, I believe, again, the electric field is the key component. We need an extremely large electric field, and I want to induce that upon, with, upon electrodes into the water itself, a dielectric of water, very pure water. And so in order to do that, I think the best way to do it with a power source that I'd like to use is a Tesla coil. Those that know what it is, it's nothing more than an air core resonant transformer taking capacitors and inductors and resonating the energy. We all know about what resonance is all about when you push a child on a swing, there's just that perfect moment to match that energy. And that's pretty much what you do in the electrical world also with vibrations and frequencies. A Tesla coil can give you that ability and it gives you on the output, it can give you millions of volts. I have something here to keep things somewhat safe within this structure here. Right now this apparatus I'm about to show you is only going close to maybe 600,000 volts. Um, and, but I do get peak power levels of one and a half million watts. So um, I am putting some serious amount of energy somewhat into this, but this is again the uh, how you could say the, uh, the pioneering footsteps of where the research needs to go and this is what we're doing. So, what's going on here is uh, nothing more than a power supply that we take from the, uh, from the building, 60 hertz power supply and we go into, uh, this is a spark gap system. Everything that I built here is tunable. I have a tunable spark gap system with a motor on the bottom. I got a tunable uh, um, primary inductance. I already changed that value, it's off right now, but this thing's tunable. The, the uh, primary that moves up and down in relation to the secondary is also tunable. Um, and this is the final output, which would then come into the, uh, the load vessel itself containing the fuel. Um, as, as amazing as it might sound, but it's water. And, you know, when you look at water, you know, the beauty of it, of course, having a drink on it, you know, it's something else, but realize that water is also H2O, it's hydrogen and oxygen, the two most reactive components, you know, in the universe. But it's the hydrogen, which is the fundamental component of the periodic table of all the elements in here. Hydrogen is unique. It's a bare, naked proton. You got a neutron attached to it or two neutrons attached to it. You know, we have the isotopes of it. And these, and these three components are very unique in regards for fusion. Um, and so what we're going to do here is a very large electrostatic field placed upon electrodes and I fundamentally agree that my electrodes are somewhat small but I'm using tungsten which is a very good, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using titanium bolts uh, which is a very good material to use for, uh, for discharges but let it be known that electrodes should be larger in size, spherical or, or doorknob shaped type, type. Um, and, and, and it's this that's going to create the electric field in the dielectric of water itself and it is in that great electric field again that what it's going to do is create a magnetic pinching environment i would refer people to my pdf file or you know on the internet to describe you know at least the road of science that i'm talking about how to try and attain something like that 
So with that said, let me just turn the machine on, let me put some energy into this thing and look at what's, what's going on in here, which is nothing more than electrical discharge going on in here, but at a high voltage, high frequency. And that's the trick, because we find we're looking for resonance in multiple states, you know, you know, to find the most optimum parameter. Um, you know, I have my own personal beliefs where I believe a true fundamental frequency will be. However, I've, I, I, at, at this moment, I believe that it's, it's really the high voltage component that's going to do this. But you need that in conjunction with some kind of frequency just to even resonate it. Not a simple DC uh, system such as electrolysis. Uh, you know, that, that's just not going to work because you get the outgassing between different, uh, on different sides of the electrodes. On such a system like this with AC, you're not going to have that. So with that said, uh, let me turn on the device that's in regards to electromagnetic fusion and let's see what happens here. That there, in a nutshell, is what needs to be done. Large electrodes are, you can consider it like the analogy to a Tesla system, instead of a top load and a return RF ground, we're talking about two electrodes. And with between those electrodes, you're establishing an extremely large electric field. It is in that, that electric field that you're going to relativistically begin to move charged particles. And it is in that motion and in that uh, energy that you impart upon it that the magnetic pinching environment is conducive and much greater in this liquid state than it is in a plasma gas state as it's been shown for more than half a century in hot fusion. Not taking anything away from it but it's, it's just clear. In regards to cold fusion it's been, it's been 15 years and that's not going anywhere and I believe that the science of this, on the low end, if you could say that any, if, any sort of reaction, whether a chemical reaction, nuclear fusion reaction, any kind of reaction, it's always like a bell curve. You have the optimum parameter at the top of the bell curve where all the components are put together and it would work fine, but always on the trailing edge on either side, you can overdrive the system or underdrive it. I believe cold fusion is on the very beginning end of this ideology. Simply taking an electrical current through a hydrogenous solution is what is giving you superfluous results in regards to cold fusion. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the, uh, the plates themselves. No catalytic cleaving actions are being performed, as the proponents of cold fusion might say. It has nothing to do with that. If there's any signs whatsoever in regards to cold fusion, it's because there's an electrical current traversing through a hydrogenous solution. And that's what's going on. And in this realm, you need to bump up the voltage a lot greater uh, to impart relativistic uh, velocities upon the charged particles, relativistic energies, which will then give you the magnetic pinching environment conducive to join atomic particles. Thank you.